Welcome to the Air Motor Virtual Manufacturing Project Spring 2020. In this video, we're going to focus on manufacturing the frame for the air motor. Looking at the engineering drawing for the air motor, we see that the material is A356 aluminum. Well, A356 is a different alloy than we're used to. We're used to 6061T6 aluminum, which is a billet alloy. Because the air motor, air motor is a sand casting, we have to go ahead and use a sand casting alloy, which A356 is the closest alloy to 6061T6. It almost has the same structural properties when after we heat treat it and artificially age it. However, castings are never as strong as billet. Remember that. So another thing after looking at the drawing is we have some really tight tolerances on this frame. Looking at the pivot hole for, for the cylinder, we have a 0 0.3150 plus 5 thou minus 0 thou. We also have that same tolerance on the hole where the main shaft goes through the actual frame. In order to machine a tight tolerance like that, we're going to have to center drill, drill, and ream that hole so the main shaft can fit in to that hole and not actually get bound up. If we, if it gets bound up while well, the air motor won't operate and it'll have a lot of frictional losses when we go to test it afterwards. So that's a very critical tolerance in this part. Looking at it, we also have the 0.228 holes in the top and we have a little flatness call out on the bottom. Now, castings come with draft on the edges. So there's draft surfaces away from the parting line. We're gonna, in order to get that flatness tolerance on the bottom of the air motor's frame, there, we're going to have to go ahead and face mill that entire surface. So really, there's going to be two major CNC operations when looking at this. One to put all the holes in the front face, and another one to go ahead and flatten the bottom out. Otherwise, the part's pretty much the same shape as the casting. If we had to machine this out of billet, it would take us four to five times longer in machine time than it would just to go ahead and machine the, the holes out of the part. We had to do that one year, in fact. Now, the last thing that we've got, we got a counter bore on the back side of the, of the frame where that where that socket head, where that shoulder bolt's head fits into the actual frame. So we're going to have to flip it over. And the easiest way or the cheapest way to produce a counter bore is a counter bore tool and a drill press. So we're going to employ a counter bore tool in the drill press to put, place that counter bore in there after we're all done. So let's go ahead and start the manufacturing operations. In operation number 10, we can go ahead and locate the part in a fixture. Notice we have a fixture that gets mounted in a vise for this operation. Once it's mounted in that fixture, we are going to go ahead and use center or face mill to flatten out the top surface of, of that part so the piston, when it mounts with it, can go ahead and have a nice smooth surface that it's going to run back and forth with. After we use that face mill, we're going to go ahead and center drill the part and then drill it and then ream the part. And at that point, we're gonna go ahead and then take it, take it on the fixture and go on to the next operation. So really the first step of the, for, the, for the frame is to go ahead and deburr the parting line on the inside where we're not gonna machine. If we don't deburr that parting line, we're gonna go ahead and have the drill walk when it, when it goes into that interrupted cut. After deburring the parting line, we load the frame into the fixture. So you're going to see that there's two set screws to go ahead and, and tighten here. What that does is it locates the, the, the frame off of casting datums. Now we're going to blow out our vise and put our fixture into the vise. This is kind of a, a rare thing where a fixture also goes into a vise. However, it works really well because we have two fixtures of the same type to go ahead and have two teams work on at the same time. Now that fixture has to get placed up against the stop and notice that set screw falls in between the cutout and the jaw. Once we tighten the vise, we go ahead and we close the door on the CNC machine and we verify that the, that the frame program is loaded in memory. Now, once the program starts, we start face milling the part with the, with the little two inch face mill. We go ahead and we center drill the part here to locate the holes appropriately. Then we grab our drill to go ahead and drill the what we call the air port holes where the air is going to flow into the through the frame into the cylinder then we use another size drill to go ahead and drill 
the, the hole for the actual reamer. What size is this drill? I'm curious. How much material are we leaving bef before we're actually reaming the part? After we drill, we use the reamer to go ahead and ream the tight tolerance holes. And now the, the table comes forward and we're ready to blow off our part. So we open up the doors, blow off our part, and now loosen the part from the fixture or take the fixture out of the vise and then then loosen the part. It's up to you on this one. Depends how many people are waiting on this operation because this machine happens to be a bottleneck in the process. So what we ended up doing in this process is facing, drilling, and reaming the holes that needed to be, that needed to be placed in the front face of the part. Before we test the sizes with our go-no-go -no -go gauge, we're gonna use the deburring tool to deburr all the holes that we created during this operation. After it's deburred, we're gonna use a go-no-go -no -go gauge to make sure that the main shaft diameter is correct and, that, and also the airport holes. The next operation, operation number 20, is actually a parallel operation. I could do operation 20 first, or I could do 10 first. So they're parallel. I can do them in any order in order to achieve time efficiencies. So if there's a bottleneck on that four axis mini mill, I could go ahead and face mill the bottom of the part because it doesn't rely on any machine surfaces, the fixtures that we're using to hold on to them. They locate on the sides or the casting targets on, or the casting datums on the actual on the actual sand casting there. So again, I could do 10 or 20 in any order. However, I gotta do 10 and 20 before I do 30. That's what makes it 10 and 20 a parallel operation. But once I'm ready to go, I get in front of CNC mini mill number one and I place the frame in the fixture so I can face mill the top of the part. Then I use the 7 8 box wrench to go ahead and tighten the part down. Now, once the part is tight, I just verify that the surface looks flat and I verify that the correct CNC program is loaded in the control. Once I'm good to go, I hit the green cycle start button and the two inch face mill comes down and faces the, the, the bottom surface of the frame flat, which that's doing, what it's doing, it's removing all the draft surfaces so the part, the frame can sit on the wood base and not actually rock back and forth when, once we drill it down. So it has, a nice flatness call out we have to ensure. Now, before we're all done, we have to go ahead and drill the 257 holes in the bottom of the frame in order to go ahead and be able to put the wood screws through and mount them to the actual wood base. When the table comes forward and the program's all done, I blow off the part and then I go ahead and I use the box wrench to go ahead and take the part out of the fixture. Then I use the hole deburring tool to deburr the two mounting holes that I placed in my part. Last but not least, the edges might be a little sharp, so I use the deburring knife to deburr the edges of that part. Now I'm ready to go on to the last operation, operation number 30. In operation number 30, I'm gonna use a counterbore tool to make a counterbore on the backside of the frame. We've already got a drilled and reamed hole in the frame that we're gonna use to locate on the fixture here. So notice we place the part down on the fixture and there's a pin in the bottom of the fixture that locates the bore on center that's now in line with the, the rotational axis of the tool. And we use a simple toggle clamp to hold the part in place. We still wanna go ahead and hold onto the backside of the part while using the counterbore just in case we develop too much torque and the part wants to spin a little bit. However, we don't have much of a moment arm occurring from the tooling forces here because our locator is actually locating directly on center. The only moment arm is the radius of that, of that uh, boring or the counter bore tool. So once I clamp down the part in the fixture, I then just double check that it's nice and tight and I turn the drill press on and I make sure that the counter bore tool slowly gets, gets fed into the part and I slowly peck at it a little bit to, re to basically relieve the chips as I make the counter bore hole. So counter bore tools don't actually cut. There's a round protrusion in the bottom that lines them up with the hole that you've made. And they, they've been designed to go ahead and counter bore large enough for that standard size screw head. And that should complete the process for manufacturing the frame. Now it's on to first article inspection to make sure we manufactured all the features to the correct size and we can go ahead and release this manufacturing process and do production with it.